impact on mortality, on product quality and health of fish. Uh, so it's a very big chapter. And uh, saying this, however, I think it's a very simple process. We tend to complicate uh, the, uh, this process a lot. And um, I think we try the last few years to uh, optimize very small details of our nutrition and we leave out major ones that really make the difference on, uh, on profitability and uh, on production. So uh, I think that uh, nutrition is a three-step process. First, we have to choose which diet uh, we're going to use for our stock. The next step is to uh, find a way to calculate, estimate how much we're going to feed. And finally, the way, the feeding strategy, the feeding protocol that we will uh, employ to, to feed our fish. Step one, choice of feed. There are so many publications in the last many years uh, about how much energy, how much protein, what is the optimum ratio of protein to energy. And we also see that different companies sell different uh, feeds having slightly different uh, of, uh, values of these parameters. Uh, excuse me. No, it's good. It will go. Yeah. I believe that the truth is that uh, first of all we need to make sure that certain nutrients are going to be delivered to our fish. Uh, how much protein we have? How much energy we have? How much? How many? How much total fat we have? It's something that is important. But most important is that we need to have digestible uh, values for every uh, nutrient and secondly to make sure that uh, components of these nutrients are uh, sufficient. So uh, Eloy mentioned this and it's very important we always have to talk about digestible nutrients and uh, when uh, we have uh, our bag with the feed we need as fish producers to be able and uh, firstly identify what are the parameters that, that we have to check and secondly I think we need to go to the feed mill that we have decided to collaborate and ask for more information. Uh, the companies, the feed mills um, by law have to uh, stamp to, to write some by law some specific nutrients but these are not enough okay so what uh, I want really to try and uh, pass the message is um, ask go talk to them and make sure see the, see, the, see the feed mill see how they operate and discuss with them some issues these issues the most important um, I believe is the total the digestibility energy and not the total energy they will probably say that they don't have this value if I was a fish farmer I would ask them to go and do the analysis and provide me this information the same for protein and if possible for other nutrients as well <coughs> so proteins fish don't have a specific uh, requirement for protein. They do have requirement for amino acids. If you provide a diet with, say, for example, 40% protein with a very good profile of amino acids, might be, it will be more efficient than a diet with 47%, for example, protein, where there is an imbalance of amino acids. So, protein is an information, but Amino acids is what you are looking for. Okay, so it's been proven that uh, a diet full uh, with high levels of fish meal, even if it has lower uh, protein level levels, is 
uh, it, it performs better than a diet with, say, a lot of um, uh, f uh, plant products with a higher um, uh, protein level. The same applies for lipids. Okay, we need to make sure that the, our diet um, fulfills the requirements of uh, our fish uh, for the fatty acids, carbohydrates, vitamins, and micronutrients. Unfortunately, we don't give a lot of attention on those uh, uh, macro and micronutrients, which are very important for um, for our fish. And uh, proof of this is that there is minimum information, minimum publications on vitamins and uh, mineral requirements. So if we start with uh, energy, just a quick uh, go through this uh, uh, energy flow uh, diagram. It's, uh, I'm sure you have seen this before. We give the fish the total uh, energy. We lose the first uh, uh, part of the energy uh, with uh, fishes we uh, are left with the digestible, the, the digestible energy we do lose uh, on other meta metabol metabolic uh, uh, processes in the fish we lose um, uh, energy and we are left with net energy and then the fish has to consume for maintenance and its basal metabolism and the recovered energy is what uh, uh, we have for growth Okay, so many years we say that we have to uh, uh, provide um, energy in the system, in the fish, uh, by using uh, more lipids in order to leave uh, protein to, uh, for growth. I think the last uh, uh, price I heard about uh, fish oil is about uh, 1,800 euros per ton. So maybe this is, has to be considered again, uh, given the fact that uh, the Mediterranean species, uh, the marine Mediterranean species, are not as the salmonid, so they don't um, efficiently uh, use very high levels of, uh, of lipids. And of course, carbohydrates uh, is a cheap uh, energy source, uh, which, however, in the carnivore species like uh, sea bass, sea bream, and uh, trout, um, is not very well uh, digested. So, as I said at the beginning of this uh, presentation, there are so many different uh, dig digestible protein to digestible energy values in the market. Uh, and if you see the publications from uh, uh, research, you, you get a big range of, of results. Um, okay, this, uh, next to energy, we go to re the rest of the nutrients, proteins, used for uh, a small part, we try to reduce it, but they use a uh, part for energy, and is a source of the essential amino acids. Lipids, energy, uh, plus uh, uh, omega-3, high, highly um, and polyunsaturated uh, uh, fatty acid sources very important for the uh, structure of the membranes. Carbohydrates needed for uh, energy and also as a binding agent to make good uh, quality pellets. And the micronutrients, very uh, important for health, for immune system, for metabolism, for stress. Okay, it, it's been proven that there is a high uh, requirement in carnivorous fish for protein. But again, as I said, we need to know uh, the digestibility of the proteins, we need to know the amino acid composition, the relationship with the energy, uh, and of course, the size of the fish. The, the higher the size, the bigger the size, uh, the less the uh, uh, protein needs. Again, we see uh, results from 40 to 55%. Again, uh, I went through uh, some very short research and I saw that it's this huge variance uh, for juvenile, for adult, for marine species and for travel. 
Unfortunately, uh, we don't have a lot of uh, information on the uh, amino acid requirements of CBAS and CBRIN, uh, apart from lysine, uh, methionine, and tryptophan, and arginine. Um, but we should stick to the uh, levels that uh, we have as requirements for salmonids until this uh, research has been completed. So, I'll say again, go and ask your uh, feed pro supplier to give you a full analysis of the amino acids. You have to have this information. Lipids, as we said again, it's uh, species dependent. Some species can tolerate higher uh, inclusions, some uh, no. The fatty acid composition, again, the protein and uh, energy balance, the size, uh, and the ambient temperature. <coughs> A big variation again, uh, both for marine and trout uh, species, uh, for juvenile and, and, and adults. What we see in the market is that each fish farmer has a feeling, has a, uh, a reason, an instinct, and they say, okay, I prefer this. Or maybe because he, got, he saw some good results. Uh, maybe the results were because the fish was better, or because this year the weather was uh, somehow different. And then they say, okay, this is the best. I believe that uh, if you stick within all those uh, uh, reported uh, uh, values, you're going to have a good production as long as you have uh, uh, covered the specific requirements uh, on amino acids and fatty acids. For marine fish, uh, we need uh, the highly unsaturated fat fatty acids to be provided by the feed because uh, these species cannot actually uh, elongate those uh, uh, highly unsaturated fatty acids, polyunsaturated fatty acids, um, so it, they have to be provided by the diet, whereas in uh, salmonids like uh, trout, uh, these species can uh, slightly elongate and uh, uh, part of uh, these uh, highly uns uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids can uh, be uh, produced uh, by uh, these chains. So for uh, for essential fatty acid requirements, we have uh, uh, 2 to 2.5% in the diet of uh, EPA and DHA, whereas in uh, trout, this requirement is uh, much lower because it can uh, uh, produce these from uh, linoleic acid. <coughs> Carbohydrates is a cheap energy source and a very good binding agent. And we can, we can get those from plants, from grains, from algae. There is a problem with the digestibility, uh, so it is uh, dependent on the species. And the carnivores, carnivores fish has uh, a limited capacity to, to, to digest uh, the carbohydrates. How complex the molecule is, if it's a shorter, if it's a starch, it's uh, e much easier to uh, be digested by the organism. Uh, how much is included in the diet? Higher diet, uh, higher carbohydrate inclusions uh, are difficult for the fish to uh, utilize. And the treatment. This is the uh, benefits of extrusion to uh, interact with each other in uh, the organic forms because they are chelated to other uh, nutrients, these bonds are not so strong, so that we don't have this uh, interaction. The same with iron. We have seen that uh, high iron concentrations uh, in the feed, and again, especially if it's in, in organic form, uh, protects the problems with uh, spiricotyle, because uh, it keeps the hematocrit of the fish uh, at levels uh, where they don't uh, die. 
because with the sparicotyle it's not the uh, parasite that causes the death but the anemia that uh, uh, it uh, causes so if you manage to keep the uh, hematocrit to a level above 35 which is normal then uh, you pass the period uh, of high infestation and you save uh, a very big proportion of your stock Okay, I'm stressing once again this. Ask for digest digestible nutrient values for your feed. Okay, it's very important. Protein sources. Eloy may, uh, mentioned uh, <coughs> some things about this. Um, the good thing is that uh, the animal, uh, the terrestrial animal, raw materials, materials are coming back poultry meal, feather meal are coming back from July 2013 uh, which will improve dramatically the quality of the feeds. Uh, all this uh, effort to uh, lower the cost of the diet and use uh, plant uh, sources have decreased the quality of the feeds uh, a great deal and what we see is both in uh, salmons and in uh, Mediterranean species, the FCR has gone down, has, excuse me, has gone up, uh, and also all these pathological problems that uh, we tend not we tend not to correlate to nutrition uh, have increased uh, very much as well. Salmon suffers with many problems, Mediterranean fish a lot. Of course, it's uh, the environment that is overloaded as well, but the immune system of the fish has gone down with the use of uh, certain plant protein sources. So I would check again the bag and make sure and ask that there's not a lot of soya bean meal in, not a lot of rapeseed meal in, sunflower, flower, or looking seed meal. I would like to see more glutens um, because they have hydrolyzed uh, much more digestible proteins uh, also protein concentrates from soya or from pea and uh, I'm looking forward in uh, having back poultry meal and feather meal in, uh, in our diets uh, I, I, I know that there's going to be an issue with the use of poultry meal and feather meal with the supermarkets and the uh, consumers. I think it's necessary to start working on how uh, the industry will face this, uh, this problem. It's very important for the viability of, uh, of the industry. And of course additives, especially with the need to uh, minimize the use of uh, fish meal, we need to uh, enforce our diet with uh, additives and uh, supplements. Prebiotics, probiotics, antioxidants of course, uh, enzymes, soft acids, uh, immunostimulants, it's, it's a big range of ingredients. Many of those work, many of those make the difference now when we work with 15 and 18 uh, percent of uh, fish meal. Um, so, when they sell you a feed which is a little bit more expensive, most of the cases it means that they have spent some more money to add some additives, some supplements to make it better. Don't try to find the cheaper uh, diet. It's a very big mistake. Of course, you have to check for uh, a number of harmful agents where by law there are uh, li uh, limits that uh, should not go above uh, like heavy metals, organic compounds, uh, oxidation uh, products, GMOs, uh, histamine and TVN that show the freshness of uh, the feed and mainly the fish meal make sure that these are provided to you by your supplier 
yeah. and there are some nutrients that have a maximum limit by law. It doesn't really mean that if you exceed these, you have a nutritional problem. These values have been adopted for, uh, in some cases, for reasons that uh, I cannot understand. Uh, uh. But they are there. So make sure that these are compliant. For, exam for example, selenium. There is a limit for selenium at 0 0.5 ppm in the diet. Selenium is one of the most uh, effective antioxidants and it works uh, very, very well uh, on stress situations, uh, on immune system and also on shelf life and quality of flesh. Uh, for a reason, they have it so low where we have uh, uh, experiments using even 10 ppm. Uh, with no effect uh, on, uh, uh, on the fish, provided this is in, in organic form, especially for uh, selenium, this is very important. So overall, I would uh, suggest to you to learn, be aware, find out <coughs> what are exactly the requirements of your species. What are the feed specifications of the supplier? Freshness is, is of vital important, importance. The oxidation status can really ruin, ruin your, your fish. Go to seminars, go to conferences. Uh, don't lose any chance to get some new ideas. Uh, do experiments. I know it's not very easy with a in a farm to do some experiments. Try to organize a small corner in your... Uh, uh, allocate four, eight, six, a small number of uh, uh, cages and always evaluate new feeds, evaluate new technologies. It will save you a lot of money at the end of the day. Go and uh, see the factory. Be friends with the people there. Uh, Check whether they have all the quality uh, standards and see what are the technologies they are using. The um, uh, extruder, the drying process, everybody is talking about the damage uh, of the feed within the extruder because it goes up to 120 degrees or more. Nobody is talking about uh, the drying process where you have for 10, 15, 20 minutes your feed in more than 100 degrees. What's happening in there? So, see what technologies they have adapted to protect your, the, the feed. Okay, so we choose one diet. Because we think it's very nice, because we think the supplier is uh, very friendly and uh, you go for it. You feel nice about this, so you have to uh, find to calculate how much you're going to feed. There are two ways to do this. You either use the tables, either the tables that you are provided by the feed mill, uh, or the tables you have developed uh, through the years of your uh, production processes. Or you can use a slightly more effective way is uh, making uh, a model, a very simple uh, Excel uh, application using bioenergetic principles. In order to adopt this uh, second uh, uh, option, you need to uh, go uh, and undertake four tasks. One is growth prediction. You have to be able and uh, predict as accurately as possible, of course, the, the weight of your fish uh, within a certain period. Two weeks, a month. Then you have to uh, determine, which is just uh, an analysis, energy analysis, 
what is the energy of, of the body of the fish uh, you grow. So for example, if you go from 100 grams to 150 grams in two weeks, these 50 grams of growth, we need to know how much energy it has. The energy is mainly coming from uh, lipids and protein because the uh, carbohydrates are uh, minimum, it's not a big uh, portion of this energy. So what we have to do is, as we grow our fish, we take different sizes of fish and we do uh, energy in a bomb calorimeter, energy uh, determination. And you know that when our fish are from, one, from 20 to 100 grams, the energy is X uh, kilojoules. When in our uh, farm is from 100 to 200, the energy they have uh, is Y uh, kilojoules. The third task is to estimate the wastes. Remember this uh, flow of energy diagram? All these wastes, fecal wastes, metabolic uh, wastes, uh, all these has to be estimated. To estimate those, uh, uh, I will I will explain later. So okay. And finally, when you have all those information from the three first tasks, it's very easy to allocate, to estimate how much uh, feed uh, you have to give. Okay. This again the same diagram. Let's not go through this again. And we go to task one. How can I find a way to predict my growth uh, within a certain period? Forget about all these uh, uh, equations. Uh, there are many models that fit uh, uh, in the growth of fish. The most uh, uh, reliable, the, that correlates better to uh, in vivo uh, results is the one with the cubic root growth. This the thermal growth coefficient uh, equation. When we compare the um, growth prediction, if we follow observed values, the real thing, which is just below the blue one, with the growth prediction um, based on the, this thermal growth coefficient equation is exactly the same. So, it to say that <coughs> even if you choose this or you choose the tables, in this way you can have with the energy flow model you can have better performance. But if you want to use the tables it's okay if you do it uh, in a certain way. Okay? There are other things in the feeding strategy part of uh, nutrition that are much more important than uh, details like exactly how, I'm gonna how much I'm going to feed or exactly how much is the uh, protein or the lipid levels. And when you are Adopting this system, the good thing is that as you have the next production, you put the new values of the growth uh, potential of your fish uh, in the loop and improves your predicted growth. And uh, every year you get a fine tuning and you make this uh, uh, program more accurate for your own uh, conditions. And you can end up with a feeding table per week. Yeah. Or even per day. This might be a problem in a, in a, in a uh, farm, in the logistics of the farm, because you cannot easily change every day, of course. Or, but I think that you can adopt a system with weekly changes of the feed quantities and uh, 
it's I made some uh, draft calculations to see what if the, the system says um, 33 kilos and you uh, feed 35 or 50 or because usually in the cages at least in, in Greece they feed with uh, the bag half bag the whole bag the multiples of 25 you go 25 or 50 or 75 in between there are no, no numbers so if you fine-tune your feeding uh, for a for a cage farm of about with a production of about 1,000 tons uh, you can have savings of more than 100,000 euros if you just uh, feed 3-5 kilos less uh, per uh, cage per day if you sum up all those kilos the number is huge and of course you optimize FCR so you have gains from this as well and this is actually from this uh, uh, program model you end up with a table where you have the initial average weight of fish, of fish each month and if you provide of course the number of fish per case it gives you the monthly growth estimate the total food per month that it has to be provided um, food per day at the beginning of the month at the end of the month so you have to increase those as I told you before through this period meals per day and expected FCR so as you do your production and you sample for uh, mean weight you see whether this uh, prediction model is close if it's not you improve it in every sampling you can you can improve uh, your forecasts and you will see your FCR being fine-tuned significantly <coughs> if you have some questions on uh, how much to feed uh, please do so and then we'll go to the final uh, part of some important points on how to feed no? ok feeding I strategies I <coughs> can I ask a question? Go. Go <coughs> can you explain a bit this? you have an initial average weight and you have a monthly growth estimate yes <coughs> but then uh, I can see the relation between uh, the two columns, or there is no relation. I mean, you start with an initial weight of four, you expect eight grams, that makes 12, and I don't see where you continue with this. <coughs> this uh, is coming through the uh, equation with the thermal growth coefficient. Okay, and then the next step is where I start. <coughs> The next month when I'm going to start and I have a measurement which is fit where? It's the 10th, the 15th, it's, <coughs> it's not one population, it, this is what I want to ask, this is not one population. Actually this is, a, this is one population, yes. It is? Yes. And then I'm, I'm getting a little confused, but that's why I don't understand. These are the same way. Okay. Okay. This, this is the, the, the concept. Okay. So, how to feed? I think there is a lot of money uh, to be saved uh, only if you organize the people who feed. So, it is very important to select competent people to feed your fish. And the, the strange thing is that for the most expensive 
part of our uh, production, we use the less paid people. This has to be different. Then you need to uh, have these people trained and happy. We have seen in uh, some cages, in some instances, instances in Greece, the whole bag in the cage. Because people are not happy. So you have, it's very important. It's very important. So select the people, not everybody can do this job. So select the people and give them motivation, financial motivation, but also ethical motivation to be have to feel that they uh, are a part of a team that they do have uh, an opinion that can uh, be followed or not but they can express it they can change things let them feel that they can change some things uh, give them uh, for example a number of cages and if they have a certain performance they have a bonus um, find ways to uh, make this force the most important uh, force of, of your, your farm. It's very important. And make them keep accurate daily records. It's the only way to see how the performance is going, <coughs> to identify reasons and mistakes uh, and uh, mispractices. It has to be a, a, a very good record keeping system in the in the farm. Okay, so this is a very well known graph of uh, FCR and growth. Here we have the uh, lowest FCR. <coughs> And here we have the highest growth. The strategy to feed uh, should lie between those two points. So you either go for very uh, low FCR, but you don't have the best f uh, growth here, or you go for slightly higher FCR, but you then attain the best growth. This, of course, will depend on the price of the feed and the price of uh, the fish at uh, any given period. If uh, the cost of uh, the, the price of fish is very low, you don't have to rush and uh, attain maximum growth. You prefer to have low uh, FCR. If you have a period of very good prices for fish, then you can uh, say and compromise a little bit FCR and uh, push your fish to, to sell them within this uh, period. So it has to be in between those two uh, points. Now these are um, results that uh, come from uh, more than 10 years of very good record keeping. Uh, of a, of a colleague who is a very good modeler, he's doing models, he's doing growth prediction, he's using these uh, uh, systems um, and is more than, more than 10 years in uh, different, geographically different uh, areas, so it includes different temperature profile areas, of course it includes many different feeds within this big period and uh, a, a range of uh, areas and this actually gives you some very important uh, uh, conclusions okay this is summer <coughs> this is winter uh, it's growth and you can see the um, uh, variation you have you have a very big variation of uh, values in uh, both uh, temperature uh, ranges 
and you see that the uh, uh, growth potential is uh, of course temperature and size uh, dependent um, we see that there is a maximum potential so no matter how much we push further than the maximum potential will only do damage to the uh, fish and the environment um, another observation he did was uh, uh, he made was that the Mediterranean strains both for sea bass <coughs> and sea bream had lower growth than the Atlantic strains um, and the overall conclusions were that be careful, there is a limit to the maximum expected monthly growth if we push the fish, the only thing we can do is exactly the opposite results health, mortalities, uh, bad FCR, uh, impact on the environment yes, so it's very important also to know that it's, on all, it's not all nutrition and you will see this in this, uh, in this graph see how much higher the variation is on growth compared on the va variation on feed consumption this means that it's not only the food that uh, uh, makes the difference and the variation uh, on growth there are another number of uh, parameters within the environment and management which are maybe more important than feeding um, he, what he, he observes and concludes is that the most uh, stressful uh, parameter after correct feeding, proper feeding is the fish density so this is something that uh, has to be uh, very well considered and uh, is also uh, a, a requirement, minimum and maximum requirements for fish density that will of course change your conclusions about your feeding as well so they are interrelated as far as the uh, explanation of the results it concerns He always uh, uh, had this uh, strategy of feeding the fish uh, at levels where at the end of the feeding fish were very hungry and uh, he always uh, with this system attained uh, no uh, decreases of growth and very good FCRs and very good uh, flesh quality so fish has to be active even after the end of uh, the meal it's very important and if you push your uh, if you overfeed then the fish it will react and the next months will grow less uh, will have less appetite and you need to res restrain the feeding even more for the next period in order to uh, bring again the fish into the normal metabolism uh, behavior <coughs> So yes, the same fish, food, with the same amounts, the same water temperature, and same species does not always yield the same monthly growth. So there are other things, other issues as well. Do not insist on feeding fish that they, uh, they don't have appetite. Low appetite will mean low expected growth high FCR they will never recover of this uh, low appetite it, it will continue, it will behave like this all the time and you will harm your face and will harm your environment <coughs> FCR Again, FCR is proportional to fish size, so the higher the fish, uh, the higher the FCR is inversely proportional to temperature, as you know. Um, and 
is actually what will uh, uh, is your indication on the cost of feeding uh, of your uh, of your feed. So I know that still many people when they uh, calculate the cost of feeding, they calculate the cost of feed per kilogram of feed. You have to calculate your feeding costs according to the uh, cost of uh, kilogram of fish produced, not kilogram of feed uh, you uh, actually provided to the fish. So the FCR helps you to calculate this. There are many, many expensive diets that at the end of the day are, are much cheaper than the cheap uh, diets. It's, we, everybody knows this, but it surprises me many times when I go to some uh, uh, production managers and they tell me uh, all feeds are exactly the same. This was a guy from a very large group in, uh, in Greece and he had under his responsibility about 10,000 tons of sea bass and sea bream and he was telling me all feeds are the same even if you feed only plant greetings or only feed fish meal you're gonna have the same results and I, I said is it possible uh, a guy uh, responsible in managing all this fish and all this money to think that this is the case and as time you know, passes and I was uh, maturing, I understood that he was right actually. He was right. All, all the uh, diets in this farm were exactly the same uh, as far as performance uh, is concerned. Because the people did not feed properly. There is no... Uh, if you have a very expensive good feed and you feed it in, in, in a proper way, it's a waste. So the guy was right, but he thought that it was the feed that uh, had the problem. Not the people, not the feeding system, not himself. Okay, now I'll go through two or three uh, specific uh, issues uh, related to feeding. Um, one is oxygen and uh, feeding. Uh, oxygen is uh, a parameter and uh, a level that has to be above a certain value in order to feed and in order to have a, a proper uh, performance. Okay, 4.5 says this reference, maybe it's a bit lower or a bit higher, but there is a, a level where we should not feed um, or we should restrict feeding. And uh, this is more uh, uh, intense when we're feeding high energy feeds. So if we have uh, more than 20-22 percent fat in our feed, uh, make sure that you have sufficient oxygen in your system uh, so the fish can cope with the energy and with the oxygen consumption needs that such uh, feeds, high energy feeds, uh, require. Uh, of course, you know that uh, temperature and gastric evacuation time are uh, related. We need to have uh, uh, an evacuation of the feed before the next. Uh, uh, meal, so this is different during summer, it's different uh, during winter. We shouldn't really uh, stuff the feed uh, with uh, uh, pellets before it has, if not completely, uh, partly, uh, mostly evacuate the previous meal. And this is shown by the uh, appetite restoration. Um, also, there are many questions on whether during uh, low temperatures uh, fish should uh, be fed. Uh, is uh, wise to restrict or even make uh, fasting uh, a few days per uh, per week when uh, 
temperatures are very low. In fact, in this uh, uh, experiment, which was an industrial experiment, um, fish was um, uh, restricted in feeding. This this one, uh, and in parallel was not restricted. This line here. So uh, up to here, there was a loss of weight uh, in the middle of uh, of winter. But as soon as uh, the fish came into the higher temperature period, from this point, and then uh, the feeding came back again in uh, normal quantities in both uh, uh, treatments, this fish actually came at the same uh, value as the fish that was not restricted at all and had higher uh, average uh, weight in the middle of the period. But one thing is that uh, you save a lot of money by doing this. You don't have a lower performance. Actually here we, you can see that it's a bit higher but let's say it's, it's the same. So you save money but you also uh, same mortalities. The start fish had 1% mortality, whereas the fish that were fed the whole uh, winter period had uh, higher uh, mortality. So restrict your feeding uh, during uh, um, winter. Also, there are some trends and some uh, uh, feed companies that produce different protein to fat levels during uh, winter. Actually, uh, the literature shows that uh, the metabolism, the, the, the rate of metabolism doesn't change during winter. What changes is the, how much uh, feed they eat. So they eat less, but they um, utilize both protein and uh, fat uh, at the same proportionally the same rate. So I don't think there is a need <coughs> to make special feeds for winter, special feeds for, uh, for summer. Um, fish regulates according to its needs the, the, the consumption and utilization. Now fat levels, uh, the effect of fat levels uh, on the diet, dietary fat levels on growth um, at different temperatures. Uh, this experiment here shows that uh, the high energy uh, diet during summer gave higher CR than the lower. and they had exactly the same uh, specific growth rate. Okay, the main reason for this high FCR is that people are not very careful with feeding, so it's much easier to spoil your, your FCR when you have a high energy diet. It's very easy to, to fall in, into this trap. And then you also you end up with the higher fat levels uh, during summer, uh, in your, in your fish. So, sea bass and sea bread, in my opinion, should not go over 20% uh, uh, fat. You, you go into risks after this level. Pellet size, it's very important for, for growth pellet size. It, it will influence your growth, it will inf influence uh, your FCR um, it will cause mortalities if it's not uh, properly uh, uh, decided and there are many mistakes done uh, according to this uh, uh, I mean for this parameter so if you consume smaller sizes than recommended then you have mortalities you have uh, casualties, eh? uh, you have cannibalism and also you lose a lot of energy because you have to eat much more 
uh, pellets to get the size, uh, the quantity of the feed in the organism, so you spend more energy. On the other hand, if you use larger size uh, pellets, uh, you end up with a fish of different uniformity because the smaller fish in the cage cannot uh, consume easily and they're left behind and you have this uh, uh, variation in uh, your population. Also, it's, uh, adv it's advisable to, when you change uh, from one pellet size to the other, to mix it uh, in order to acclimate the fish to the new sizes slowly. Uh, the same is very important also to mix the feed if this pellet size also comes with a formulation change, which it happens uh, many times when you change the uh, size of feed. There is a, um, for sea bass and sea bream, <coughs> there is a, uh, a guideline which colorates the length of the pellet, the diameter, and the um, fish weight. So from 2 grams, for example, until 3.2, with a minimum of 1, you have to go there. Also a good guideline to uh, calculate how many meals you will have to give is this one, which uh, correlates the average weight of the fish and the maximum meal uh, in grams per fish. So when you know how much is the total feed, you know how much is the maximum meal, you can calculate how many meals are optimum for each size of the fish. Fish density, as I said before, and as you know very well, it's a major uh, parameter. It can change completely uh, your uh, economics, your growth, your mortalities. This uh, graph here gives um, values, indicative values for uh, different size of fish and kilograms per cubic meter in cages of uh, different capacity. W wounds, infections, uh, lower growth, uh, bad uniformity are all uh, problems resulting if you have your fish uh, in high densities. You can produce more thin fish, healthier fish with less mortalities when you have them uh, in the correct density. You need to communicate uh, with the people who feed. Eh? So the, these people have to know the type of fish food you are using and why. Why you have chosen? What is the feeding equipment? Why is chosen? What fish uh, they, they, they grow? Um, they should feed the same cages so they can observe any changes, if the mortality starts, if there is a decrease uh, of uh, appetite. They should feed as quickly as possible, but of course without losing any uh, pellets through the, the nets. If you keep feeding for hours, you have your fish spending energy for hours in order to feed and uh, you, lose, uh, you lose growth. So it's an optimum speed which correlates uh, also the losses. The first indication you have that uh, there is a low appetite, you should stop feeding. Don't push the, feed, the fish. They can uh, show you, they can give the message that we don't want to eat. It will only make damage if you uh, press. 
okay, and every everyday communication from the people that uh, feed with a nutritional manager. So, some common organization mistakes that uh, are uh, uh, very often happening in uh, the farm, always related to feeding. Eh? So do not feed and check, repair at the same time nets of the cage you feed or the cages that close uh, to, to, to the cage that you are feeding. Don't stress the fish at the time of feeding. You have to keep the time uh, of, the, of the meals. Try to make this as stable as possible. If you have other activities, uh, put these other activities in another time of the day and have as a priority to feed always using the same timetable. When you mount the nets, make sure that they're properly mounted, that you don't have any um, areas that are folded, that uh, uh, you have the correct uh, weights, so the current does not change the shape of the feed, of the, of the net, uh, which in relation to feeding, where there is a lot of activity, you can have injuries uh, and mortalities, and also feed losses. You should include in the protocol monthly uh, mean weight samplings. Find a way that is uh, compatible to the number of your people that work there, the uh, infrastructure you have. Find a way to have a regular mean weight sampling. You need this to see if things are process proceeding uh, as uh, your protocols. Uh, it's necessary to calculate the feeding quantities that you're going to give. Um, it's uh, very important and will save you a lot of money uh, on your production process. Saying that you have to do all these things, you have also uh, reduce the handling as much as possible. Stress brings back uh, your, uh, your population. So do programming efficiently in order to minimize the handling. So, because I'm a nutritionist, I think that feeding is the backbone of the daily operations. And leave everything else on second uh, uh, priority. Okay. So, all other tasks should be scheduled according to your feeding, okay? Uh, keep records, nutritional records, production records. This will help you also to uh, uh, calculate uh, the, the whole logistics of your uh, uh, fish farm. When to order, feed how much, when you're going to have the fish, when you will harvest, markets, everything. Yeah. So, even if you choose to have a table, or if you choose to go in a more optimum system like this, this is again the same. You have to end up with such a table where you will forecast your growth which will enable you to forecast the quantities of the feeds uh, you will have to give you're gonna have an FCR with your regular weighings you're gonna monitor this and say oops I'm a bit higher I'm a bit lower I'm doing okay I'm, it's, this is higher in this case you will uh, go back and see what's wrong with this and you will optimize the whole of the process. Now feeding systems uh, were uh, 
uh, presented by, by Nikos. The only thing I have to say is that whether it's going to be a simple or complicated uh, automatic or hard feeding system uh, or a self feeding system, try and find a way to detect the uneaten food. The salmon industry is using now regularly most of the farms these kind of systems and we all know what are the results on FCR and the environmental impact in this industry. So uh, whether it's going to be uh, this person who will feed and will be very careful or it's going to be a system where it will detect any uneaten fo food feed uh, below a certain uh, depth in the cage and will give you a signal that feed is lost, stop feeding uh, depends on uh, what is the system the feeding system you are using but uh, try and see find what is the cost, what are the available solutions this will save a lot of money and it will produce much better feed so to conclude overall I think that like uh, as a fish farmer you have to continuously evaluate the feeds uh, you are uh, using or evaluate new feeds you have through these models and through your experience put a biologically feasible target for growth because this will also determine the feed that you're gonna give record record and analyze the data try to use an as accurate as possible a forecasting system for your fish and for your feed and do support the people that work on site. They will, uh, these are the key uh, factor of your production. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. So, if you have questions and I can answer, I will be very happy. Fish nutritionist nutrition we want to start from zero don't take all this uh, information and adopt all these methods 
because also this system with uh, uh, bio, -ener bio -ener energy model comes from uh, it's not a new uh, story it comes from uh, an animal nutrition mm -hmm. and there are very, a lot of solutions that come from uh, pigs and uh, poultry that uh, can be applied uh, to fish and um, we don't use them I, I totally agree with you it should be this way yeah. nevertheless this, this system has a, a, a good could have a mistake, yes, the, the overfatting of fish. Because if you study the retention of energy, if the fish is overfattening, uh, your, your energy needs are very high, and it is not true. And this is a question that, that we have to, to yeah. consider. Okay, saying this, uh, the environment where we can do experiments uh, with fish mm -hmm. is so much different than the environment that they do experiments in animal uh, nutrition. So if we want to do a, a bioenergetic uh, experiment with fish, it's so complicated, it's so difficult. I know. In the cow, it's very easy to collect fishes, it's, uh, to measure uh, losses uh, with fish, it's so difficult. So saying that we're behind and we're not following some practices, uh, I have to say also that it's not exactly the same in, uh, in the sense of the methodology needed is much more complicated with fish. And it's complicated but not impossible. No, no, it's not impossible. In every case, this, this approach uh, depends on the, of the, the feed moment. And uh, the feed farm they have uh, another tax as the, 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 the optimization with security of number of fish and weight of fish in order to establish the daily retinue fundamental. So but because, because along one mouth, fish uh, have you know, good uh, uh, under feeding or over feeding then mm -hmm. uh, 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 at, at the end of the, of the cycle the, the food conversion ratio is very high because, because uh, uh, the ratio, ratio is not well established but it's not easy because I remember once sure, but not, not, it's not impossible I'll give you an example once um, we were running an experiment in uh, uh, in a commercial farm, but in very small cages. Mm -hmm. That was uh, something like uh, two by two meters. Mm -hmm. And we were doing uh, mean weight samplings. Once I was curious to see how many fish we need in a cage in order to have a reliable uh, mean weight. When we weigh half the fish and then all the population, there was a significant difference of the mean weight, even if you weigh half the fish. So, okay, we say, we say do regular uh, weighings, do regular weighings, but when you have a 100 meter cage with, what, two, three hundred thousand fish, yeah. how, how do you get the mean weight? You develop different methods. You don't weigh the fish individually. You use cameras and then you take the size and you come up. Size, size, uh, weight. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise it's absolutely true what you said. The big fish scale. Yes. So you take the half of the population and you find 100 grams, you take the whole population, 150. <laughs> That's it. I mean, That's it's clear. But what when you, when you are regarding your presentation about how modeling how, how much to feed, so you say 35 kilo, not 34. Yes, so, yes. So accurate. So it is, because this modeling is supported by three, three parameters, temperature, average weight, and fish number. But in, in the, you know, in the fish, fish production, production scale, it's impossible to get this number accurately. Even for the temperature, what is the right temperature? In the morning, in the midday, in the afternoon, at five meter, at ten meter, at two meter. So, what is the right in, uh, uh, <coughs> tool to measure? Yes. Because I will give you two, two tool. You measure the, by this. This is uh, half degree less than other one. So, a lot of news uh, noise about this. Uh, it's a poly polyparametric uh, uh, system, but the idea is that. <coughs> If you feed 32 grams per uh, kilos and not 35, you will save 3 kilos. And no matter whether your fish is 100 or 120, 
it will not change your, your uh, uh, performance. So it's the best you can do with the given practical uh, conditions. <coughs> You're going to save it again. If you give 35, you won't. Of course, maybe it should be 36 or 31, but only the process of having this will save you money and will improve your FCR and your end of this. It's not exactly what you should do, but it's a guideline that will put you into a program and it will, at the end of the day, improve your, uh, your production. It's true, you don't know where, how much. The fact that we are not accurate does not mean that we don't make personal and we don't like the yes. But they think the uh, and it's how much to feed, how much to eat, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think the question is that you have to give to the feeder that table what is supposed to eat. So he knows what what uh, should we but uh, Never going beyond this uh, yes. proposed but number, but if first. necessary, he, can, he has to stop if he feels that there is a problem with the time. But if we don't have the correct thing, well, how much we have to spend, how much we should do in Croy and in Toulouse in the morning? I have seen a lot of times in this case that it is uh, 50 kilograms, 50 kilograms, 50 kilograms. And the first case have got double of this than the second one. <laughs> you know, why? Because the, the feeder have got not one table to say. You think that it's normal because 23 cakes is going to be 50 kilograms. And one, okay, maybe if you get 50 better, because that way you can I think it's right because uh, you should give the most accurate table possible and give them the possibility to start with it. This colleague was very strict in his, uh, uh, when he was a manager in the farm and he would ask every morning the feeders to weigh 14 kilos, 26 kilos for each case, 52. So every morning the people had to go earlier and weigh exactly how much to feed. Maybe it's exaggeration, maybe not. Because any time I was going to his uh, farm, even after feeding, first of all, uh, walking in the, in the, uh, uh, between the, the cages, I, I could hear the fish like piranhas coming to eat me. Uh, he had FCRs below 1.5 always, with uh, 12 months sea, sea, sea bring. Uh, and he proved <coughs> this every production cycle always. So it's, it has to change as a mentality in the farm, okay, that we need to be as accurate as possible with our infrastructures, with our people. And be careful, feeding is <coughs> the most important factor to improve your, because as I said at the beginning, there are many diets, okay, most of them are okay so much research on, uh, on diet. Most of them are okay. Make sure that certain nutrients are at the right levels and then improve your feeding. This is what I should advise.